I wasn't expecting to film this video. Hello everyone, I'm Monica from Mooney Reads and welcome back to my channel or hello if you're new to my channel. Today I thought, you know, I wasn't gonna do this. I really wasn't gonna do this. I was like, no, I already read it. I didn't like plan it, but you know, when did we plan shit in this channel, <laughs> honestly? But I, I, I just read Never Let Me Go by Kazuo Ishiguro and it was incredible. Now, if you don't know, Never Let Me Go is the story of Kathy, Ruth, and Tommy. Now, Kathy, Ruth, and Tommy are friends that grow up in this idyllic Hil Hilsham, Hilsham, I, I, Hil Hilsham? I can never say that. But anyway, they grow up like in this boarding school and from very early on, on the, in the book, you can tell that they are being, they, they are, they are children that are being brought up to be organ donors. You, this is not a big spoiler. It's literally something that is in the back of the book. And when you're not an organ donor, when they don't call you to be an organ, oh, by the way, I'm sorry if you can hear my, my washing machine. I profusely apologize, but if you're not an organ donor, you are a carer. I mean, you they all will end up being organ donors at some point, but they also are carers to other organ donors. That is the premise of the book. I went into it very much like this is gonna be like <laughs> like the poster, the island. But what I found is this is so much more profound. I was like crying at the end. I was like, stop, please don't hurt me like this. It's so good. I love, here's the thing. I love it when I feel that a character is real. Like when I say, hey, I know you, I've seen you, I've gone to school with you. Even if it's not obviously not the same person, <laughs> but because these are fake people. What I really liked about this book is that I got to see facets of people and I think that that is beautiful. The book doesn't c concentrate too much on like the sci-fi aspects as much as it does on the human aspects and you don't even really get into the whole sci-fi feel of it until the very end. Like the last, I think the last three chapters really deal with the moral issue of having children in order to take their organs and knowing that that is what you're doing. Like in the end, I gave the book five out of five stars. I really loved it. I definitely recommend that you read it. I'm so glad this is the first book that I've read this year because it's just like last year, the first book that I read in the year is like, you know, one of the best books that I read the entire year. And I'm, man, I'm so glad that I picked this up. It's so good. I've got the movie cover and that's where this comes in. Now, this is my book and movie blind date uh, project where basically I read a book that I haven't read before and I see a movie that I haven't seen before that is based on that book. I originally didn't even think about doing this again because I was like, Ugh. Like I'm gonna have to read three books. And I was like, why did I make it with just one book? Just make the experience about one book. So I have officially read the book. I'm not gonna watch the movie tonight because I just read the book and I don't wanna break my heart tonight because prepare yourself for the tears and the heartbreak and the heartache because this is a, this is a heavy hitting book. This is stream on the emotions. And if you know anything about me is that I really like sci-fi that really goes hard on emotions. Like I, I, I don't care about military stuff unless there's like some big drama in it. This is why Dune is still one of my favorite books. And this is definitely going into my favorite books of all time list. I saw the trailer for the movie. I just, I can't, I, I don't want to cry, but I will for you. This is, this is what it's come down to. Just me crying on camera. It's going to happen. Um, <laughs> I, I, probably not on camera, but, uh, so this is the first part of the video. This is me reviewing the book. I absolutely adored it. I loved, seriously, there's not one thing I didn't like about this book. Sometimes it did feel a little bit dragged, like it was dragging and I was like, well, where, when are we going to get to like, Oh no, are we gonna escape? Are we what what's gonna happen? Like I but it just kept catching me. Like it just kept like being like, shh, my darling. We'll get there. We'll get there. It's only 282 pages. You can get through this puppy in one day. You don't have to do like me, which I <laughs> took 10 days to read it, but that's because I'm in a reading slump, okay? I wish that I would have followed my journey of reading this um in the format that I did before when I did this video, which is just me vlogging. There we go, vlogging. But honestly, I just 
read this in chunks. It was like one chunk one day and then I left it and then eight days later I read another chunk and then two days later I read the other chunk and it wouldn't have been anything else more than me saying I just I'm, I'm in pain constantly. <laughs> it was so painful and I like that they didn't steer away from an ending that is divisive. I like that. I really like that. And I really like... Here, here's the thing. I like it when things in books that seem like they might be a big deal aren't a big deal. I know that sounds strange, but I like that they did that in this book. Some things that you thought, oh, this is gonna be it. This is it. And then you realize that just like in life, things just happen. And they don't have to be the end all be all. Like, I like that this book showed me that there is no like end point. You know, like you, that moment that you're like, it reminds me of, of this teenage feeling. And, and that it, the book deals with these people from when they're very young until when they're um, older adults. This feeling of, you know, when you're a teenager and it's like, this is it. This is the moment of my life. Like there's nothing else. This is the time of my life. But then you grow up and you go on living and you realize there is no one moment. I think this book touches on that. This movie's gonna destroy me. This movie, this movie's gonna destroy me. It's just gonna tear me apart. And I'm scared and I love all the actors in it. And I just, yeah, it's gonna be fun. So. When you see me again, I will have watched the movie and then we'll compare. We'll compare and contrast. From what I saw in the um, trailer, I think they're pretty much sticking to the book. And I will tell you whether you should watch the movie first, read the book first, my thoughts, which one you should do more or what, well, okay, what I think you should do because, you know, I don't tell you what to do. So, yeah, I'll see you when I've seen the movie. Toodaloo! Hello, welcome back. If I look kind of like trash, it's because I just got done with a 12.5 hour shift at work with very little time in between. I got, I, like, I don't know, maybe like an hour or something in total. So I did 11 and a half hours of teaching today and I am so tired. But if I want to get my video on the book to movie adaptation blind date project for Never Let Me Go Up, on Friday, I have to watch this movie tonight. Now, I'm gonna be honest with you, I'm not really looking forward to watching this movie. Not only because the subject matter is really hard and like the movie looks really good, but it also just looks like a straight up adaptation of the book. But um, it's just a sad, it's sad, you know, it's sad and, and I'm not sure you know, I want to I wanna get sad tonight, but but I said I was going to do it, so I'm going to do it. Also, yes, my clothes are hanging out to dry. Just, you know, real life stuff. <laughs> so I'm going to um, get myself a hot beverage and watch this movie. I probably won't film tonight my reaction because by the time it's it's over, I will like just probably go to sleep. But I'll film it tomorrow morning and then I'll edit everything tomorrow morning and get this video up for you on Friday. If you don't get a video on Friday, this was the video you were supposed to get last Friday. If you are watching this on Friday, hey, kudos to me. Anyway, I'll talk to you guys later. This is the possible like craziest light source. It's literally my candle and the backlight but and my computer. But I just have to say, the movie is just as addicting as the book. I had to stop it for a moment because I really want to capture like this moment of just like, I want to stop it because I'm really tired and stuff, but I just want to keep going and I want to keep going. And so far, I think they've done a really good job. I won't say too much, but I'm, I'm like, like falling asleep, but I'm like, I just have to finish this. And I know how it ends. Like, it's funny to me because I totally know how this ends. <laughs> and I still want to keep watching. So uh, I guess that says really good things about the movie. The movie is shot beautifully though. Like, I'll say that. Also, I want to, I want all the wardrobe, like all of the things they're wearing. And the actors, just 
so far, it's really good. I like it. I like it. I like the adaptation and like I said, I'm like falling asleep and I still want to keep watching. So I didn't expect this. Again, this is why I like doing this. Because we always have this idea that the book is better than the movie. But is that really the case? Like, is the book always better than the movie? Like, why can't we just learn to appreciate? Like, that's, that's what I've learned doing these videos. And I'll say it in every video. Why can't we just learn to appreciate each medium for what it is? I love the changes they made and they make sense for the movie. I mean, you can't tell the whole book in the movie. And I just... There's one change that they did make that I'm kind of dubious about, but in general, I'm in love. Like, I'm in love. I, I love doing this. I love doing this because it's like you find books you love, you find movies you love. I don't think so far I've been disappointed by any movie. Have I? I don't know. We'll see if with flowers for Algernon, but I'm going to continue watching. I only have 30 minutes left, so after that, I'm definitely going to bed. <laughs> I am actively holding back tears and I knew the end. I just think that this was so well executed and I know I said I was going to go to bed, but I just I just wanted to capture this moment because I feel like this is the whole reason like oh, I'm going to get blown out, sorry. Why like we read, we watch movies, like this is why we consume art to have moments like this, to have moments that are transformative in some way, you know, to to have moments that really make you Oh, this is gonna sound ridiculous. <laughs> it's a book channel where I curse a lot, but they really make you feel human, you know? Like, oh man, that, that was good. Obviously from this clip, you know that I loved the movie, but tomorrow we'll just, I'm just gonna compare them both and um, give you my final thoughts. So whether you should watch the movie first, read the book first, that kind of stuff. Um, it, wow. I'm, I'm, I'm flower-gasted. I found a new favorite movie. Again, the same thing happened with um, Solaris. And that's so cool, isn't it? Like, <laughs> you go into this thinking, oh my god, I read the book, so it's automatically going to be better. And in the end, it just turns out that you find something that is your new favorite. So, <sighs> I'm really glad. I love doing this project. You have no idea. This is like the fav my favorite thing that I do on my channel. So, anyway, I'm going to go to bed and I'm going to go cry. <laughs> <laughs> Talk to you later. Hello, welcome back. Now I'm looking a little less um, crazy, I think. <laughs> But anyway, let's talk about the movie watching experience of Kazuo Ishiguro's beautiful novel, Le Never Let Me Go. Now, I did say that this novel was amazing, but I don't think I kind of really let you in on the fact that this is a very slow but very addicting, very sad story. Um, in the end, what this story is about is about the ethics of organ donation and the ethics of breeding people in order to have them donate their organs as they grow up you know in the end they tell you like we have cured all kinds of diseases how can we ask people to go back after we have manage to find a way to not get people to die but of course at the expense of whom because there is, there are they are people they are children they experience love they experience heartache and all of this is within the movie too now of course you saw my reaction to the movie do i think you need to read the book before the movie no actually i think the movie does a good job of letting you into the book like into the world of the book but and also by it like kind of weeds out a lot of information that i feel not drag on in the book but it's so well condensed and i think the script was so well um done that it really doesn't matter if you like i this is one of those times where I'll say, if you've watched the movie, then maybe you could skip the book? Or maybe not skip the book, but um, when you watch the movie, you really get more of a sense of the world that we're living in. I think, hang on. 
think in the book, even though the book is amazing, like don't don't take this as the book is not amazing in off in and of itself. It is. It is incredible. And I completely recommend that you read it. However, if you've seen the movie, the big reveal at the end isn't going to be as powerful as it is in the book because there is a big reveal at the end that is heart wrenching and heartbreaking and if you've already seen it in the movie then in the book it's kind of drawn out but you already know it and you already know that it's coming of course like i said before you can't put everything that is in the book in the movie and i think they did a really good job of adapting so in this case i think that both mediums did a really amazing job and I wrote something, and I'm going to read it because I wrote it right after I watched the movie. And it says, you should go into the movie like you're going into, big, into the book. Know that it's slow, but that it's meaningful, gentle, and heartbreaking. And I wrote at the time that you should read the book first because of that final reveal at the end. Of course, when you... The problem with reading the book first, I find, is that you are expecting certain things to come up and you are expecting certain things and when they don't or when they change them you are kind of like okay so what's gonna you know like it kind of takes you out of the story so the only reason i recommend reading the book first is simply because there is a drawn out um twist at the end that doesn't happen in the movie the twist does happen but it doesn't get drawn out here the twist happens and we still have about like 50 pages left of the book they are heartbreaking pages this book really broke my heart in the most wonderful of ways like i was laying in bed last night thinking and i was like i have so many feelings right now <laughs> you know so um my recommendation is that do both read the movie um read the movie <laughs> watch the movie read the book i recommend the order should be read the book and watch the movie but if you really don't want your heart to slowly be torn from your body and then stomped on then probably watch the movie first and then decide if you want to read the book i will tell you the move the movie really does a good job adapting the book a lot of things that happen in the book happen in the movie maybe not in the way that they happen like for example certain things are changed in order to save time there of course you know that kind of thing happens but in the end the movie is a great adaptation of the book that's the point and i really appreciated the movie i i think the movie cues you in on the sci-fi elements and aspects much quicker than the book does they have this whole like they they have bracelets they have to scan every day and you see them taking medication and they talk about them and the fact that they're organ donors pretty early on while in the book you are kind of you know you are you are led to believe that but not as much i think the book is a lot slower and gentler in that aspect and the sci-fi things are really just the organ donation and whereas in the movie we have more sci-fi ish elements so yeah i hope you enjoyed this book to movie adaptation blind date project for uh kazuo ishiguro's um never let me go i don't remember the director's name of the movie but the movie is beautifully shot i think i already said that but i'll insert the name of the director here and well i hope that you guys enjoyed this thank you so much for watching and i hope to have more of these up i really th these are really my favorite my favorite videos to film on my channel because i just think that we have always this idea of the book is better than the movie and i think that that's kind of bullshit you know obviously there are different mediums we have to look at them differently but sometimes um a movie can be just as good as the book or it can be even better solaris it's not better it's just different they are different mediums so comparing them is very hard you know i mean you spend how many how, how many days do you spend reading this book whereas you have an hour and a half to tell this entire story so of course things have to be changed of course things have to be changed out by the way the actors 
just chef's kiss it was beautiful i love the movie i really recommend it if you get anything away from this maybe you don't want to read the book but watch the movie it's really good and i think it brings up a lot of talk about organ donation and about where we might be going in the future just like i think th this is why i liked about sci-fi because it brings up a lot of thoughts about the future in general so if you like this please hit the like button and let me know if you've read this book if you've watched this movie and yeah without any further ado i bid you adieu with a friendly reminder that i post on a weekly basis so far i've been sticking to the two to three times a week we'll see how that goes because after this i have a class and i have another uh, 12 hour day but this is the last one of the week. It's just the first, you don't care about this, but the, I have Monday, Tuesdays, and Wednesdays are like 12 hour days, and then Thursdays and Fridays are very relaxed. So, yes, without any further ado, I bid you adieu, and I will see you in another galaxy far, far away. Thank you so much for watching. And remember, I appreciate each and every single one of you. Bye-bye.